A couple of weeks ago, we announced officially that we were planning and are in the process of deploying LTE first on our 1.9 G block spectrum that we have available nationwide. Um, we're doing that on the same network vision platform that we announced uh, almost a year ago uh, as the overall upgrade for our wireless infrastructure. So what the, the next component of what that platform will do is the LTE deployment that we announced a couple of weeks ago. Um, that, think of that in terms of a single network that has multiple capabilities on it and our ability to manage seamlessly between the 3G and 4G experience. Because of the nature of that platform, we can really um, manage how the spectrum is used so as traffic shifts from 3G to 4G and as we're able to harvest, for us, it's not a major issue. The radios are there, the broadband units are there, maybe we turn on another license perhaps, but it's a very easy upgrade as traffic shifts naturally and evolves over time. So as such, since we uh, announced that we were going to uh, deploy LT as an extension of our existing 4G service portfolio, um, that puts us on the roadmap that takes us forward with the 3G PPP standards, which includes in the future uh, LT Advanced and the future releases of LT. We fully expect to be deploying those as they become available in standard offerings with our suppliers. We uh, have talked with them and worked with them for the specifics on the roadmap. And so this morning uh, in one of the sessions, uh, uh, we had talked about LTE Advance probably being available in the, in the first half of 2013, which is really just consistent with what's expected from a, a global roadmap and a vendor roadmap perspective. So you know, that's just a matter of you evolve with the technology as it becomes available and take full advantage of the capabilities, several of which we're very interested in because it will create a lot of benefit for our customers through our network deployment. As a wireless carrier, um, Spectrum is always something you look at in the long term. All the carriers in different ways are examining the uh, challenges they have, their spectrum positions and where they're going, and we're no different. I think the advantages that we have for our situation is uh, it basically along two major lanes. One is the network vision platform, its flexibility, its ability to adapt to, and our ability to add spectrum and technologies uh, with the type of flexibility we have in the architecture gives us a real benefit. And then the second thing is the fact that we, we want to encourage and we think it's uh, important to encourage different kinds of business models like the one we struck with LightSquared around spectrum hosting. Um, they have some spectrum that they're working on getting cleared through the FCC. We have a network. Why not bring the two together? to make a cost-effective solution with the goal being just providing a more economical infrastructure that customers can use. All the operators such as ourselves are dealing with the tremendous growth of data traffic that's occurring across the industry. It's very well documented. There's lots of studies. They all say the same thing. Um, I think from our perspective, we really embrace that as an opportunity. Um, the way we approach with our customers is we want them to really enjoy the experience not to worry about how they're using their device and really use it in ways that they want to. So as such, we really focus heavily on that user experience to manage the data traffic with a combination of approaches. The first and foremost is the deployment of network vision architecture, which helps create a foundation for a much lower cost, fundamental wireless mobile data ar architecture that's very flexible, it's very adaptive to new spectrum bands, new technologies as they emerge. We then couple that with uh, advances in picocell, femtocell, microcell technology so we can really address data hotspots. We also add into that how do you manage the total amount of data in a way that preserves the customer experience by looking at the traffic type, what type of device you're delivering it to, and deliver to that device the necessary bandwidth to create the experience the customer is expecting, but also to optimize how much bandwidth you are using, and that way you can accommodate more customers uh, for the for the available RAN capacity you have.